Hello and welcome back. This video will continue where the last one left off. I have opened up a blank DGN file using the delivered exampled workspace and opened the template editor. Alright, let's get started. As we open up the editor, I'm going to expand the list on the left so that we can see what's included in the example library. The path to the library file is open by default is a little long, so I'll flash it here at the bottom. Be aware that each project may have their own library. We'll look at why this is a good idea later on, but for what we want to do in this class, this will be just fine. You'll notice that this looks a bit like a directory structure, and you can think of it as that. Just remember that we're looking at the data contained within this file. The first thing that you'll see is the point name list. Since this is an introductory course, we aren't going to go into the list other than to say if you're creating your own components, this list becomes pretty important. But for now, let's move on to components. And I'm just double clicking to open up these subfolders. Here you will find numerous pre-made components. With these, you can create custom templates in a matter of moments. And I'll show you how. Notice that there are several subcategories of components giving you a great starting point. Most DOTs or larger corporations will usually have a library tailored to their own environment. Below that are end conditions. We broke them apart for other components because they really are a different animal. Check out our other courses for information about end conditions, but for now it's enough to know that they are usually how you, the road ties back into the existing ground. And finally, we have the templates folder where you can find several pre-made templates. Let's open up the rule folder and select the two-lane rule template by double-clicking on it. Let's take a second to talk about view controls. There are a set of icons down at the bottom of the work area and they are from left to right, zoom in and out, zoom in and out in the X direction, and zoom in and out in the Y. Personally, what I like to do is use the wheel on the mouse. Rolling it forward and back zooms in and out, and if I hold the Shift key, that'll zoom uh, vertically, and if I hold the Control, that'll zoom in and out horizontally. Back to the icons. Next to those zoom in and out controls, you'll see a window area, and a fit view. Now the fit view expands the scale to fit. So if your object seems squashed or exaggerated in one scale and the other, don't be too concerned. It's just how it works. Next to those icons, you might think that these two arrows represent the view previous or view next. In fact, those are your undo and redo tools. And right next to that is an icon that looks a little like the old AccuDraw compass, is dynamic settings. We will cover dynamic settings in more detail when we create our own components. Okay, now that we can move around, let's look at the points in the center of the template. You can see that the center line point is green, while both match line seek points are yellow, and finally the anchor point is red. This is a critical visual clue as to how constrained a point is. Let's double click on the center line point and take a closer look. This will bring up the points properties dialog. This is where you can change the offset values or what we refer to as the constraints. As the center line point was green, you can see it does not have any constraints defined. It is free to follow our alignment and therefore consider the reference point for this template. Now, let's open up the match line seek right point just above the center line point. For now, we're just going to close this dialog and double click on that point to open it up. You can see that one constraint here is defined, and you'll notice again that the point is yellow. So let's look at a fully constrained point now. So we're going to open up the match line anchor, but this time let's hit this little crosshair icon on the point properties dialog. That allows us to simply select the next point we'd like to edit. Just as a heads up, whenever you edit a point, make sure that you tap apply 
before you move on or your changes might be lost. As we open up the Point Properties dialog, you can see that it has both a horizontal and a vertical constraint defined. Both constraints refer to the parent point of the center line, which if you'll remember is the point on the template that will follow the alignment and every other point is created from there. Another way to think of this is being similar to a cell's origin. Another way to see how points are tied together is to toggle the constraints view up here at the top. This shows you sort of a logical tree how the points relate to one another. It's good practice to design your template so it flows from the origin out and then down as you see here. If this seems all a little confusing don't worry we're going to go over this in more detail later on. Okay, so you remember at the beginning I said templates are very dynamic and one template can be reused for several instances. Now I'll show you what I refer to as a hard edit. What we're going to do is make changes to the template itself. Be aware that there are also two kinds of soft edits that you can use while working with a corridor. What we call applying a parameter constraint or a point control. The point here is that you certainly do not need a different template just to change the width of pavement or other changes that can be done on the fly. Let's head over to the right edge of pavement to illustrate how easy it is to make a quick change to a template. As you can see, this point is fully constrained with a slope and a horizontal constraint defined. To modify your template, it is a simple matter to edit these values. Let's change the pavement width from 12 foot to 24 foot just to see a dramatic change. I'm simply going to enter that value in and hit enter and immediately you'll see the template update. You will notice that all the points under the edge of the pavement are adjusted as well. This is because the lower points are constrained by the upper point. It really is that easy to tailor an existing template to your needs. If we wanted to change the pavement thickness, we could just head down to the pavement bottom point and edit its vertical component. However, we would have to do that for the point underneath the center line as well as for the left edge of pavement as well. If you'll notice this label, pavement concrete surface depth is the same for all three points. We can use that to our advantage and keep this in mind when you're creating your own templates to make them easy to edit as well. To make this change we're going to head over to the active templates tab. Underneath parametric constraints you will see that pavement concrete surface depth variable that we had earlier and if you click this little arrow to the side you'll see the three points that that variable is assigned to. So modifying this variable will change all three points in one go. To do that we double click on the point and simply enter our value in here. Now I'm going to do something dramatic from 0.33 there to minus one foot so we see a dramatic change and I'm going to click the OK button here and immediately you'll see your template update. Remember that parametric constraints can also be defined as you are working with the corridor, which can make easy work of lane widening and other edits. Hopefully you can see not only how easy it is to edit an existing template, but how versatile they can be, and a single template can be modified and changed on the fly. In the next video, we will look at taking pre-made components and assembling them into a custom template. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.